Hello everyone, TJ Gaming here, back with another video. Today we're gonna take a look at Karn, whose event has finished, and some other upcoming stuff, along with a new battle pass. So if you're ready, let's take a closer look. Your purity shall be your armor, hate shall be your weapon, immortality shall be your reward. So let's start it off here with the battle pass, there's a new one, and we're gonna talk about it. As you can see, I haven't done anything with it so far. And that is because I wanted to show you guys everything there is to see. So, if you want to activate it, of course, the Premium Battle Pass. You can either go for the normal version, uh, this is in uh, Danish currency, or you can go where you get plus 10 battle points for each time you complete a mission. And you get some more rewards and an exclusive ornament if that is your thing. So, let's go ahead and take a look at see all. Here we go. So, here's the premium pass that you just saw, and here's the ultimate pass. So, as you can see straight away, there is a big difference in the shards. Also, there are requisition orders. They are, for me personally, one of the main reasons I go for the ultimate pass. There are some badges. There are more Codex of War. Remember, you need these. Also, when it comes to Codex of War, the legendary ones, it is Sunday. Make sure you go over and check out the Guild War store. Every Sunday there is a free uh, Codex there, so make sure you go pick that one up. And then there is some Blackstone, but that's the same amount. And then there are some Orbs, some Epic Badges, etc. There are legendary items in both, and then you can just see here what there actually is. And as we keep going down here, you can see it's basically the same all the way down. It's the same amount of Tomes of War, so up in the top is where you get to see what it is actually worth. Now, personally, I really like uh, getting this because of the requisition orders. They are probably one of the main reasons for me. As for the actual character itself, I don't really need it. I have gotten quite a decent amount of it uh, in recent times when it comes to my requisition orders or other stuff so there is that and as you can see the, the skull throne for the skull throne has ended and it was really fun this uh, my account and journey in this game is basically four months old and I got way further than I ever have so that was really a fun interesting progress to actually go in and get it done I believe in Gamma I actually got up to wave 11 with my squad being able to clear certain things I couldn't get that many of the bonuses here and there but I could get some fairly consistent ones all over the line and one of the main things I went with was my Ancrax he is really good if you do onslaught with Chaos characters, make sure you ask for Ancrax shards. Getting him to gold and legendary is going to help you so much in so many different things. His deep strike with his passive is so good. Make sure you get that. For me, Snot Flogger as well was also someone who was very useful. Alongside Rotbone. Rotbone is the one that I would argue for new people you should actually go ahead and get him in guild war in the store there because he's just so good for every single thing he's very good for defense in guild war but he's also very good for some of the legendary events where you have to heal to survive so i would definitely recommend him to buy from the guild war store despite morgan Ra being in there who is very useful for many different scenarios and setups in this game and scenarios I mean game modes but Rodbone is just so useful also in arena as you can see I've scrolled up a little bit and down on my roster I am quite chaos heavy with my units but it turned out to be very good also as you can see I have death guard a um, little bit built I got lucky with a typhus pull and these kind of lead me into Karn that I want to talk about because as you can see here I did get Karn unlocked and I want to talk a little bit about what kind of squad I 
envisioned for him and this is for me mainly guild war focused based on that i really do enjoy guild war i think it is gonna be a very crucial game mode for me it already is because i really enjoy it but karn has a very unique kit uh, all the other content creators has made amazing videos so i don't really want to go over his movement and etc we're gonna take a look at his abilities in just a moment but he is really really good so for defense also he's legendary so that's really good for his stats for defense if i were to pair karn with something i would actually pair him with a rod bone and the reason for pairing him with Rodbone is, I imagine, let's say Karn accidentally kills one of your own units, AI can mess up. I think Rodbone, if they are adjacent to him, he can still revive them. Otherwise, if he just does damage and doesn't kill anyone, again, Rodbone can heal them. I would also bring in Typhus, because that way we have two Death Guard members and they have their aura. So they reduce armor, which is going to help Karn even more. And also his psychic damage and his active is super good in every single thing. So that's free person. Then what else would I combine them with? I would probably combine with Rask. And the reason why I would combine with Rask is actually very, very simple. Rask has his shield when he, ever, uh, when he gets a kill with his passive. So you are not only being able to heal yourself you are also being able to shield yourself which is really good like you could go in with Karn if he kills them great but his damage will spill over into other characters if adjacent so and then Karn can swoop in and uh, get the kill off and also I would probably bring Ascor as along because he has his active where he taunts and he takes less damage he also has terrifying so overall he just has really good damage reduction and he can boost Karn's damage which again is really good so I might pivot into a squad like this and um, try it but I think that would be really really good so that means my Black Legion that I've been really working on which has benefit uh, a lot because that means I can go into Fall of Cadia Elite and I can farm the gear that I need to bring up my World Eaters to gold and that way the pivot will actually be really really good because while I do like some of these characters they are a little bit squishy and doesn't offer as much so without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at his actual abilities so I'm using this unlock image that I took earlier today but we can still talk about his abilities his active is kill main burn all of them have exclamation mark he deals one piercing damage to an adjacent enemy, then he deals six times eviscerating damage that is also piercing at 50%. And then he deals one plasma damage to an enemy within two hexes, preferring kills. So if you get him all the way up, let's just say epic for instance, depending on how far you are. If you're a newer account like me, you probably don't have to bring him to legendary. So let's just take at epic when you get to epic badges at level 35. His piercing damage would be in the range of 1400 to 2k. His eviscerating damage would be from 340 to 450. That is times 6, so that is pretty good damage. That would be around 1800 to yeah, 2.5 ish. And then Plasma is 940 to around 300 and, uh, 1350, so pretty nice damage for his stats if we combine it with, uh, or not combine, if we compare it with other abilities such as Asriel or Typhus, their active abilities, this is actually quite good damage. And uh, again, it, prefer, it prefers kills, so that's really good. Then we have his passive, which is called the Betrayer. After performing a normal attack, Karn performs a secondary attack targeting an adjacent enemy, dealing four times eviscerating damage. Again, at Epic, this is basically at 400 to 500 times four, so that is really a lot of damage for a man who can move three spaces his first turn. He has Rapid Assault, so he can move four. This is really great. Now, if you get a kill off with Karn, which you should, if Karn has defeated an enemy this battle, at the start of his turn, he automatically moves up two hexes towards the nearest enemy unit. 
and deals 4 times eviscerating damage to an adjacent unit. Karn prefers enemies for this automatic move and attack, but target friendly enemy units if no enemy is in range. So, what I envision for Guild War, this kind of squad that I have been talking about, World Eaters with that guard, you would probably want to bring this squad into a summon one. And the reason why I say a summon one is actually very, very simple. A summon squad will mean that he will probably always be able to move up the spaces because AI just keeps moving forward. So you can position him with Rotbone getting some really good damage and kills off. So you can kind of combat a summon type of squad. So a summon type of squad could probably be in something like Necrons because he does so many attacks when he actually does his attack. So that's really, really good. And he has um, four hits. So yeah, you could probably get a lot of kills uh, done. They might be a little bit uh, hard on the summons, but you can get something done here. Also, there are the summons from Necrons. Then we have Snotflogger, we have Bellator, like some are really popular on defense. Achimantos as well. Tau might be a little bit difficult one, but you could probably still manage. Then we have Commander Yarg as well. Summons is something that I see a lot of people using as their main ones. I'm not at level 5, the, uh, the top one for guilds, we are a little bit lower, but we're still doing really, really well, and we are outperforming guilds that are way higher than us, at least compared to total roster. So, this way of doing it, and also, if, let's say, they attack Ascor a little bit, then having someone adjacent to Ascor buffs their damage, so you could actually, that big flood of summons could actually work in your favor in case they are a little bit hard to kill they have a healer there eventually just make sure you survive with rotbone you can heal everyone you have his active you have a good chance of reviving so overall even though the actual champions on defense might have high hp and be hard to kill to begin with over the course of a battle you will actually just be able to one shot them almost because you get this huge damage buff so that's it for me everyone drop a comment down below consider leaving a like and subscribe so you get notifications for future videos and i'll see you all in a new video and best of luck in the game